man. Did my thing just pop? Guys, ugh, my thing just popped. Did you, can you guys see that? I don't know. All right, let me take it off. That just kind of threw me off. I'm so irritated. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Adana and I am back with my sixth week of PA school completed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I do want to tell you guys, please go ahead and hit up my GoFundMe page. I'm going to leave it in the description box below so you guys can go ahead and check that out. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe because we have some good information and content on here. But with that being said, you guys, I am so excited. Um, as I told you, I had four tests and a quiz last week and it was rough. You guys, it was so rough. When you walked into the school, into the building, you could cut the tension and anticipation with a knife. It was so thick. Everybody was on edge. We were so nervous because we've never had to deal with something like this, where we have two tests in one day and then on the other day we have two more tests. And a quiz so it was really 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 nerve-wracking I'm pretty sure a bunch of us did not have a 4th of July me and my family and some of uh, the students in, my, in the class we took at least two hours to enjoy our 4th of July oh mommy got it mommy got it let's see what it do what it do Get it ass, get it ass, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ooh, 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 ooh. But it was nice to actually just get a break from studying, but then we had to jump right back in it. But it paid off, you guys, it paid off! Oh my gosh, it paid off. I did so well. I did so much better than my first test, which I am like so thrilled about. That's like, it's amazing. I'm so happy. Um, it just kind of solidifies it. Stamp of approval, yes, Adana, you are supposed to be in PA school and you're gonna be a great practitioner. And I think everybody did pretty well as also. Uh, everyone was smiling. We don't know any of our grades, um, any of our you know cohorts grades because what one thing that we do, and I think, every, I really think every PA school should do this, but one thing that we do is we do not discuss our grades. It's just to kind of foster that teamwork mentality. We're gonna be team players. That's what a PA is all about. So it's not about competition, who's doing better than who or anything like that. Um, as long as we all pass, that's all that matters. I really, really like that about my school. We're not about, you know, well, who got a better grade? No, we all pass great. One step closer, to being a PAC so really really glad about that but everyone was happy everyone was smiling so I'm pretty sure we all did pretty well on um, those four tests I did want to talk to you guys about why I became a PA um, or chose to well I'm not a PA yet but I'm PA yet. so why I'm on this journey to becoming a PA why I chose PA over NP or an N MD you know because I get that question a lot well why not go straight for the MD uh, why do you want to be a supervisor why not be a supervisor instead of a manager I'm like mm, isn't that the same thing because I've had supervisors and managers not too all at the same time but whatever anyways just trying to be facetious about things and it's it's really not even about that or somebody's like oh well why do you want to, why, why be a PA? Like, I don't know why all these people want to be doctors, but they don't want to be doctors. Why, why are you going to be a PA if you want to be a doctor? And I'm like, if I wanted to be a doctor, I would have went to med school. Duh! That's a clever retort. Duh! Brilliant. Brilliant! Duh! Your parents are divorced. Oh, oh your, your parents, parents are, are divorced. divorced. Duh! It's that simple. But once I found out what it meant to be a PA and what goes into it, like it was an easy decision. You guys, first of all, if any of you know me, you know I am super family oriented. So that was like one of the driving forces in choosing PA. I wanted to be able to spend time with my family. I wanted to be able to see my kids grow up, um, to be able to go to my daughter's, you know, recital if she has one or her gymnastics or acro you know performance I wanted to be able to do that and I don't want to have to be getting called away or um, you know I'm working so I can't make it like 
I wanted to be able to set my, my time on when I wanted to go in, when I have a set time on when I'm going in and when I'm coming out, and be able to enjoy the rest of my day as I please. And being a PA affords me that opportunity. Um, and NP does that as well, but I didn't like the nursing model in terms of teaching. And I don't want to do like the patient-centered model. I wanted to do the disease-centered model where we're treating the illness, where we're looking at figuring out what is wrong with this patient and then addressing that and attacking that. And like that's just, I'm analytical like that. That's how I wanted to learn and that's what I wanted to be in. That's something that you need to know for yourself. Are you about making sure that the patient is comfortable and um, their lifestyle and all that different stuff? Then go ahead and be a, an MP or be a nurse because that's the model that they're under. But if you're about making sure like, I wanna know about this disease, how do they get this? How are you gonna treat it? Um, what, that's where you go into being an, um, a PA or an MD. Now, I there's like a misconception that PAs cannot prescribe medication. And that's so far from the truth. PAs can prescribe Schedule II drugs in many, 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 many states. I think there's only five states that we're not able to prescribe Schedule II drugs in. And that's like your opi opioids, like your Vicodins and, you know, those type of uh, drugs. And we can do that. We can prescribe those drugs. And um, NPs can as well. Like, we, we're pretty much co-contemporaries in that area. We're allowed to prescribe the same drugs. So that's not something that's restricting us um, at all by any means. So that misconception is squashed. And furthermore, the PA profession was built under being an assistant to the physician. But now, 50 years later, they're kind of moving up away from that in a sense we're still part of the team we're still about like in a com departmental relationships and still working with physicians and other practitioners however now um just recently in may there's been this law passed that is called optimal team practice and this like if you are trying to be a new PA, if you're an old PA, this is something that you should definitely know about because what optimal team practice means is that PAs are no longer required to have a supervising or collaborating physician like on the books with them. It's all about your state. Your state kind of helps and regulates and determines what you're able to do. So there's more of um, an autonomy with it. It's not full autonomy by any means because again, we're still part of the team, but we're able to do so much more. We're able to be in rural areas where physicians cannot go. And that's that's needed because people are getting sick all the time. You're, I mean, there's always gonna be someone sick. So if a physician is swamped somewhere else and they cannot make it to this area out in like I don't know the deserts of Nevada Nevada has deserts right <laughs> yes I think so so if they can't make it out there then um PAs and NPs can go there um and this opens up the doors a lot for PAs because before since NPs have 22 states where they can practice autonomously they were being they're more able to be hired like it was easier to hire them and manage them because they didn't need a physician on board to sign off for things and now it's the same with PAs. So we are on the rise, we're on the move. It's um, it's a great thing. Um, I'm really excited to see how it changes the way that I practice and also um, in the future how new PAs practice because we're also moving towards a doctoral degree. As in nursing, um, I do believe they're moving away from the master's NP degree and as PAs, we do have that opportunity as well. We can have a doctorate in health science. The doors are wide open, you guys. So I really suggest that you do your research, know exactly what you wanna do, know where you wanna practice. One thing that I believe is so amazing about being a PA is the ability to kind of float. You know, you can um, be a generalist, that's how you come out of school, but then you can be certified in different things like emergency medicine. I know that with this new optimal team practice that has been passed, psych is opening opening up. So there can be psych PAs, and it's needed. There's we we it's I definitely feel like it's an area of medicine that is not really it's kind of like the forgotten sister at some times. Like we really need to do more with the psychiatric um, aspect of medicine, and so now that's opening up for PA. You're able to just kind of go from place to place. If you're 
if you spend 10 years in one area and you're like, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm feeling like you're in emergency medicine. So it's like, boom, boom, boom. Things are going fast. You're always on the go. And then you want like a little bit more lacks of a schedule you can go into family medicine or urgent care where you have set hours and for the most part you kind of send them off to the ER um, if there's an issue that you cannot necessarily deal with so it's really really great I implore you guys do your research figure out exactly where you want to be exactly what um, each thing affords you because there are certain levels and certain degrees of things that you are able to do and not able to do with each of those professions. Know how long you want to be in school. If you're not about being in school 8 to 12 years, <laughs> don't be a, a, a physician. Don't be a specialized physician. If you're just trying to do that 6 to 8 years type of max, then go ahead. NP and PA is what's for you. So really, really do your research. Find out about the profession. It's an up and coming profession. It's great. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about all of these changes that are happening and what that means for me as a new PA coming into the profession to practice. So that's my little tidbit of information for you guys for today. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave it in the sec comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to them. I'm really, you know, I really want to just give as much knowledge as that I've learned so far just in the last six weeks of me going to school to you all so that you are just well informed about being a PA and what it means to be a PA student. So leave that in the comment section below. If you really like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you really like what you see on this channel, go ahead and subscribe and join this journey with me. Um, I'm really excited and really ready to have you guys. Um, Oh, also remember, I am still fundraising to stay in school. So go ahead and hit my GoFundMe page. It will be in the description box below as well. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys again so much for praying for me and like rooting for me for last week. It really, really helped and motivated me. It paid off. I did good. Thank you guys. I'll see you next week with another week of what happened in PA school. Oh, and um, so I am going to also try to do like a vlog thing, you guys, where um, I'll show you like a day in the life of a PA student. Um, me, I'm not a PA student, but I'm going to show you a day in the life. So go ahead and make sure that you stay tuned because I will pre-warn you or preface you on when that's going to happen. All right, see you guys next week. Thanks again for watching. Bye.